All right. Thank you, Jonathan Roseland, for coming on the podcast. Yeah, pleasure to be here talking with you. Yes, thank you. Tell us a bit about yourself, your history, and what you do. Sure. So I've been really passionate about nootropics and everything performance enhancement enhancement and uh, mindset optimization for about nine years now. Uh, about that long ago, this movie Limitless came out. You recall it? Yes, I do. It, it was a, a game changing movie for me. Because as the credits rolled at the end of that movie, I thought to myself, there has to be some thing like that in the mm -hmm. real world. There has to be some drug or, or something that you can do that would enhance your mind like that, that would that would open up your your library of memories and experiences of the past and would enhance your, your cognition, your ability to solve problems that would be, that would be transformative. And so I have been, I've been studying that subject full time for about five years now. I kind of mm. went through a, a transitionary period where I was a freelancer and my uh, what I would be doing in the evenings, uh, what I would be what I would be watching on YouTube all day long was anything that I could get my hands on on this topic of cognitive enhancement. So at this point, I've used well over a hundred different nootropics. Uh, I've tried probably almost anything that people have heard of that's out there. And I, uh, yeah, I do a number of self quantification experiments to try to figure out, to, to try to uh, distinctly draw a line things, uh, different nootropics, things like uh, the racetams, the adaptogens, uh, urologics, to figure out what is, what is actually enhancing different capacities of the mind, and what are things that are maybe just a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, that's what I've been real passionate about. Uh, every day I'm reading some book on the topic of, of health to try to figure out a new angle of this, this, this ultimate puzzle that each one of us faces, which is unlocking our own potential. Right. I wonder which, if you had to choose three nootropics that work the best for you. Of course, there's a great individual variance, but if you had to choose the ones that work the best for you, which three work the best for you? Okay, that would be paracetam. And number two would be the adaptogen rhodiola. And number three would probably be nicotine, which I took right before giving you a call here on Skype. Mm, cool. Because there's such a great individual variance and some nootropics work uh, for some people and some don't work for uh, the very same people, how do you figure out which ones work for you specifically and how do you make sure not to uh, fall into any pitfalls and uh, risk too much in terms of your mental health and uh, cognitive performance? Mm -hmm. Well, I have the benefit of doing over a hundred different nootropics over the past nine years. So I've got a pretty good idea at this point of the things that I'd be willing and interested in trying. At this point, I'm a little bit more conservative when it comes to the research chemicals. Uh, every, every year, you know, scientists will attach interesting new molecules to different pharmaceuticals to give them some sort of enhanced property. 
and the the internet seems all too seems all it seems all too voracious in willingness to try things that haven't gone through uh, clinical studies. So I have a, a a methodology of looking on PubMed to see if there's clinical studies that have been done on things. And what I what I look for is a alignment in between what is being said on PubMed, what the researchers are concluding about a given nootropic or drug, and what people are talking about anecdotally out there. Researchers and studies and abstracts of studies are famously very, very dry in their descriptions of the effects that a nootropic will produce. So I tend to go and look around and see what people are saying in the forums. For example, I just completed a research project. Well, actually I haven't, I have a little bit more to do on it. It's on NMN, which is a precursor to NAD plus, which is this really crucial molecule to the mitochondrial function. And looking at the looking at the research that's out there on on PubMed, there's quite a bit of research on it, but it really is kind of really is kind of dry, you know, just discussing the uh, the the upstream mitochondrial benefit that it might have. However, I went over to Longevity and I spent several hours going through probably a couple hundred different posts that people have on this stuff, NMN. And I heard a lot of people describing it in really glowing terms as a nootropic, which is kind of what you would expect because it is so empowering of our mitochondria. And so with something like that, I'd be very interested in trying it and hopefully I'll have it on the way to me here in Bulgaria sometime soon because the uh, anecdotal data is saying is adding to what the PubMed research is saying. So I would say that people should do their research looking at looking at both the science and looking at uh, what's being said on online in places like Longevity or even go and check out YouTube videos that are done by people that have used things. Right. Uh, just for the listeners, could you uh, describe why are mitochondria important for our cognitive function? Yeah, so the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, as I'm sure that people are aware of. And you have the highest concentrations of mitochondria in your eyes, in your heart, in your mind and in your uh, in your uh, in your cells in your ovaries if you are a woman and so seeing as the, the mitochondrial dysfunction is prolific it's uh, it's really quite horrifying the number of mitochondrial dysfunctions that are very very common in any given population and especially especially if there's people most of your listeners are probably people in the United States, people in Western Europe, around the English speaking world. And there are really unsettlingly high levels of toxins. Uh, basically, you are just in a bath of toxins all day long, unless you, unless you're uh, a hermit that lives out in the out in the woods and bathes in the bathes in the ocean and uh, wipes your ass with leaves from a tree or something like that. You're subjected to really high levels of toxins, and so when you have a when you have something like NMN, which is going to feed your body additional. NAD plus, which is really crucial to that ATP mechanism that occurs, something like that is going to, since the mitochondria is the underlying 
energy system of the body. There's increasing research that's showing that all of the all the common diseases we have, all the chronic diseases of aging, Alzheimer's, dementia, even things like diabetes are arising likely, likely from mitochondrial dysfunction. And so when you're feeding your mitochondria more of what it needs, you're going to be mitigating the the emergence of these types of aging diseases. And then for younger, otherwise healthy guys like me and you, what it's going to do is it's going to give us just a whole lot more energy. It's it's essentially just letting our bodies perform at the capacity to which they're capable when we're when we're making sure that we're feeding our mitochondria exactly what they need. Right. Great. Um, and if we take a step back to what we were talking about earlier, when people are about to uh, embark on their nootropic journey and try on a new uh, nootropic and they are searching on PubMed for this nootropic, when they've found a study, uh, what in that study should they be looking for in order to make sure that they're safely experimenting with this nootropic? Yeah, a couple of different things. So people are going to get kind of overwhelmed by information searching on PubMed. So I, if someone is looking to select a nootropic, I would actually probably not advise starting with PubMed because there is a, there, there's such an overwhelming amount of information there or what they would want to do is if they're if they have a health issue like if they're trying to deal with alzheimers or if they are struggling with anxiety for example they may want to go into pubmed and cross reference those kinds of conditions there but it it still is i believe pubmed has like 27 million different different papers and studies and results on it so I would suggest <clears throat> actually that people go onto forums, that they go onto places like Longevity or maybe even Reddit, and they describe, okay, this is my specific issue. This is kind of what I want to accomplish. This is what this has been my experience thus far. And then get some get some feedback from the people that are in those online communities. And that's probably a bit better place to start than really diving into the deep end. And if you can put together a short list of things that you wanna try, like paracetam, like rhodiola rosea that you said that you liked quite a bit, starting with a short list of things and then trying maybe five different things or whatever's people, whatever people's budgets permit, and then comparing how those things do. I, uh, I think that's a little bit better than diving into the deep end on PubMed. Uh, on PubMed, what you do want to look for is PubMed on the uh, upper left-hand side of the search results. It gives you the option to cross-reference by the clinical trials and by the human versus animal studies versus the in vitro studies. And the human clinical trials are going to be a whole lot more useful. Right. Makes sense. So you mentioned earlier that Prestam, Rhodiola rosea, and nicotine are your favorite nootropics. Which, if you'd have to choose three, but expand the scope of what sort of interventions you could use, uh, so just biohacking in general, which three interventions in your life would you say have made you feel better? Uh, so we're talking about happiness and well-being here. Okay. Probably no fab. <laughs> ranks up ranks up ranks up there real highly because there's a 
there's an unquantifiable proportion of, and I guess I'm talking to the gentleman here, there's an unquantifiable proportion of the male population, a very, a very high unquantifiable proportion that's addicted to pornography because it's just so readily available. It's just a few clicks or swipes away from whatever screen you have in, in your pocket. And when uh, men in particular, when they abstain from a uh, porn and abstain from ejaculation for in between two weeks to several months, it raises your testosterone levels and it begins to rebalance the natural award and arousal system of our neurobiology. And it's just it's just a very uh, so consistently uh, men find that when they abstain from that for a period that they just have so much more energy to take on life and that the blue of the sky is so much bluer and that the experiences that they're going through and simple human interactions are there's there's just so much more life in them so that's got to be pretty close to the the top of the recommendations that i give well i guess i guess just men i would say in general as far as uh, as far as biohacking so uh, sleep hacking is is also something that almost everybody can benefit from because it's in the state of modernity it's so uh, there's so many things working against you getting good sleep and so things like you know avoiding your blue lights before bed uh, avoiding excessive technology use before bed using a a, a sleep hacking regimen of supplements and beverages that you take before bed these things all make a really big difference in the amount of rejuvenation that you get out of your sleep and everything, all of our performance hinges on the quality of our sleep. So I would list that as number, number two. Which supplements and, do you take for, uh, for sleep, better sleep? Okay. I've got a really effective stack. So I have a, a beverage regimen first of all, which is I'll do a tea that has a number of, that has several anxiolytics in it. So I'll mm -hmm. make a, a real nice tea that will consist of ashwagandha, usually like two to three, I would say sometimes as much as three grams of ashwagandha oh, in between. Yeah, with ashwagandha, it's an Ayurvedic herb. It's okay to take it in mm -hmm. higher in higher amounts and it really will tune down your autonomic nervous system and relax you quite a bit and it tastes it tastes great and it dissolves really nicely in a tea so i'll mix that a lot of times with a bit of chamomile which is also a a mild anxiolytic and then I will combine that with some apple cider vinegar here in Bulgaria, like once a week, me and my wife go and buy the the most legit apple cider vinegar I've ever seen in my life. It, it comes from some guy that makes it here locally and it just tastes really fantastic. So if you can get your hands on the best apple cider vinegar that, uh, that you can afford, I'd urge people to do that. And then I mix in some honey along with that. And so that tea is is very soothing. In fact, I, I have to drink it slowly because it kind of it, it'll it'll knock me right out and then I won't have my opportunity to uh, to read in the evening. So I'll sip that and then I'll take some magnesium along with it. Magnesium is great for sleep. And then if I want to take this to the next level, I'll do a little bit of CBD along with that. And that combination ensures a, uh, a heroic night of sleep. <laughs> nice. Moving on to the uh, third biohack for happiness. 
Uh, okay, the third biohack for happiness. I'll get a little bit philosophical here. Sure, go ahead. And I'll say pursue meaning in life and not happiness. Right. For 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 a long time for a long time I would tell people that I don't give a damn about happiness, that happiness is a foolish thing to pursue in life, especially for men. And I now I'm I'm happier than I'm happier than ever. And I I actually credit this to my wife. I have been married uh, a year now, which I guess is not that long. But believe it or not, nothing has made me happier in life in in every dimension, uh, in every uh, way that you can think of happiness than being married. So I I guess I would have to list. Uh, yeah, marriage would be my third biohack for happiness. Mm. But, but I'll say, yeah, I'll, 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 add, I'll, I'll add that my, you know, getting married for me was about pursuing meaning that it was that it was about looking at, you know, what is the what is the most meaningful way that I can do my biological duty on this planet and perpetuate my genes and do so with a really great life partner and that that pursuit of meaning and taking taking that risk you know when you when you get married you're you're putting all your eggs in one basket you're making a pretty big bet on just one person and that uh that bet made for long-term thinking for long-term, you know, long-term trying to per perpetuation of, of my genes has resulted in the most happiness in my life. Cool. Do you have a biohack for cognitive enhancements? That would be music. Okay. Some uh, I, specific sort of music or, yeah? Yeah, there's, I like a app that's called Brain FM and it plays really cool algorithmic kind of electronic sort of music that is really stimulating of a creative state for me. And this is a tool that I, I actually paid for a lifetime membership for it because it's just, it's just that good at stimulating focus and creativity for me. So yeah, music, music is something that profoundly can change our state of mind. This is why, this is why people listen to music to feel better about themselves or to energize themselves before a workout or to feel more sexy or to, I don't know, feel angry at the world. Uh, music has a really powerful effect on us humans. So I use the brain FM. I use that too, and uh, I can attest to its uh, efficacy as well. Uh, I like it a lot too. And on the point that you made uh, about music in general, uh, I completely agree with that too. And that, for example, if you are working out and having uh, motivating music and energizing music, then that will help you uh, lift more. At least it does that to me. Uh, so I agree with you, indeed. Uh, yeah, you us, my, yeah, my, my, my. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. My friend Neil, my, my friend Neil Thakar told me the same thing. He's, uh, do you know him by chance? Who? Neil Thakar. He's an American guy and he created a product that's quite good called Quantum Mind. I don't, unfortunately, no. And he's, he's a massive guy. He was a professional bodybuilder and I did a podcast with him and we were talking about the, the trade-off in the gym. My preference in the gym while I'm working out is to listen to some podcast, uh, typically a podcast about some sort of health or fitness kind of thing. Although not always like the other day I was listening to a, a, a 
podcast about history, but we were talking about the the trade off in the gym where you can use your time in the gym to listen to an audio book or to enlighten yourself, or you can listen to music. And if you're listening to the right music, it it does kind of produce an uptick in the in in the force uh, in the in your in your workout. But I I personally I prefer the I prefer to listen to podcasts in the gym because I'm not like Neil I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder I'm just trying to look a little bit better and maintain health in the gym and I use some workout supplements like uh, HMB in the gym that result in a little bit of an uptick in my in my power output anyways so it's yeah everybody needs to decide i would i would urge people that i would urge people to try it both ways try listening to music that pumps them up in the gym and then try listening to uh podcasts on some topic that they want to be enlightened over right i like that uh and for me that's uh that experimentation process that you just suggested that people uh try that resulted in uh, music being my my uh, preferred uh, lesson in the gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you told us a lot about what you do uh, in your biohacking regimen. Uh, is there anything that you do daily that you haven't told us about? Okay, I make love to my wife almost Mm -hmm. daily and uh we i I try to practice okay uh i try to practice the tantric breathing are you are you familiar with this uh not in depth at least so please uh explain further yeah so there's a couple of books on this topic Uh, this is one of the this has got to be one of the most underrated uh, topics that it can really uh, they, they can really add a lot of a lot of joy to uh, your life, which is practicing these techniques and the ob- the ob- these breathing techniques and the objective behind them is to hold back from ejaculation. Uh, you probably you're probably familiar with some of this uh, Eastern philosophy outlook where they believe in trying to mitigate the ejaculation as much as possible so that they can store up their their masculine uh, essence uh, within themselves. And so I'll engage in a uh, in this breathing technique where I tr- while making love, I try to keep my breathing as metered as possible this this is probably one of the one of the better sex hacks is keeping your uh keeping your breathing slow and conscious while you are making love and the the initial challenge that a lot of men run into with this is that they is that lovemaking is just such an exciting thing that you'll get carried away and that your breathing will become really energetic and then boom, things are over. And so what the Taoists advise in some of the books that are on this, which is that you actually practice doing meditative masturbation as odd as that sounds practice doing that on your own uh doing it doing it the normal way with with lotion (laughs) although you probably uh, won't want to be watching porn while you're doing this because it is so distracting but you would practice doing uh deep diaphragmatic breathing on your own and do this for in between about five to 10 sessions on your own. And then you'll find that the next time you're with a woman, you have a lot more control over your breathing and you'll be able to enjoy each other uh, quite a bit longer sometimes. Mm, Cool. Uh, Did you mention any resource for that so that people can learn more about it? Yeah, there's two really good 
books, which is the multi-orgasmic man, and then the Tao of longevity, health, and sex. Have you have you read either of those? No, I have not. Uh, I may in the future, though. Oh yeah, check them out. You won't regret yeah. it. <laughs> cool. Uh, and are there any uh, any resources that our listeners should uh, be aware of? in regards to what you're doing? Yeah, so I have this website, limitlessmindset.com, which has over 500 different articles on, uh, I, I do. I have about 70 articles that are meta-analyses on these different nootropics that go real deep and analyze the the uh, body of clinical data on on about 70 different popular nootropics. And then I've got a bunch of other articles on just things, different things that interest me related all around this topic of health and longevity. And I was actually uh, kicked off of YouTube recently. I was just Mm. telling too much truth on YouTube. So they kicked me right off, but I have about 300 videos and a lot of them are very high quality videos. I think that they were some of the most high quality videos on YouTube. That's what a lot of people told me. And all of those videos people can now find on my website. And I also have a a bit shoot channel, which is kind of like a free speech version of YouTube where hopefully they won't kick me off. Uh, But I realize that that's kind of an overwhelming amount of information. So I created this flow chart that you may want to link to that I think people might find helpful where I break down all of the different videos and articles and podcasts that I've done and I break them down by different interest areas like uh, sex hacking, uh, memory, overcoming, ADHD, and I have them all broken down visually in this flowchart. And so that is probably the best place for people to start because then they can figure out what they're interested in. And I probably have 10 articles on it. (laughs) Cool. Uh, We'll link to uh, all of those resources in our show notes. Uh, Thank you very much for coming on the podcast, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, it's been a real pleasure. What's uh, what's ahead for you? I, I'm I'm curious with the the neutralized brand. What is it that you want to put out there in the world on the internet uh, that's going to differentiate you? Right. So we are currently building a web app. Uh, we're in the early stages of this, so we can't uh, say too much yet. Uh, but that is uh, the big picture and uh, what will eventually differentiate us. And this podcast and blog that we have are ways for people to start getting into the uh, world of the tropics and also start uh, following what we're doing uh, and eventually we will be launching our web app, which will help people use nootropics more safely and make more informed decisions uh, on their nootropic use. Mm-hmm. And h- how is the scene there in Sweden? How's the scene? What do you mean? Oh, the scene, like the, the biohacker community. Right, right. Okay. Um, as far as I know, it's uh, very progressive in here, uh, in Sweden, but uh, I haven't met all that many biohackers that uh, are uh, aficionados, let's say. Yeah, I'd, I'd urge you to do like meetups there. You're in, right. you're in Stockholm, so you're yeah. in a cosmopolitan epicenter. I have no doubt that if you organize something that you'd have quite a few people that were interested in connecting. Maybe, maybe you can even find yourself a, a biohacking wife like I have. <laughs> nice. I'd like if, that. if you're yeah. looking, if you're looking. 
yeah, it's, sure. It's a pre- it's a pretty good way to make magic happen. <laughs> Cool. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast, Jonathan. Yeah, fantastic. Look forward to staying in touch with you and seeing what you're doing.